other side, seventh among active coaches in wins. He has been incredible at his time here at Tennessee. More NBA talent populating this roster. Yeah, and that, you know, there, there's a reason, Michael, that people want to come here to play because he can not only get you prepared to play at this level, he matriculates you up to the next level. And look at one of those players that you expect to be at that next level. Kennedy Chandler, first points of the day. Yeah, right on cue, man. You know, Kennedy Chandler can do what he does at all three levels, especially what you just saw just now. Upstate starting five there. Bry Bryson Mozone, the team's leading scorer. Great story he is for Upstate. There's Ganey. There's Mozone, the team's leading scorer. Into the lane with a jump stop. Short on the teardrop. That's a good-looking shot, though. You know, they chased him off the three-point line and got all the way to the heart of the basket and didn't make it. Tennessee so quick, and that's one of the things Rick Barnes wanted to see. Faster pace. A lob. <laughs> oh, oh, drops the hammer. Yeah, man, that, that kid, man, is special. Kennedy Chandler with that assist there. He made it look easy, but that's a difficult play to run. He come off of the screen, jammed down screen, and threw it up easily for Kumwa. Chandler scored her assist there on 35% of Tennessee's points this year. A point and an assist already in this game. Upstate looking to get on the scoreboard. Brazil. Freshman from South Carolina. Alves. Pull up jump shot from the left elbow, wide right. Tennessee just makes it really hard. I mean, you know, they play exceedingly well. Gap side defense, man, they just make it so hard for you. James. Vescovi. Volkerson. All conference selection. McDonald's All American James short on the three pointer. No recycle. James puts the shot up. Doesn't get the shot to drop, but does draw the foul and get to the free throw line. You know, we, we, we talk about the fact that Kennedy Chandler can do it all, but Kennedy Chandler could have. He had a head of steam. He could have gotten all the way to the bucket, to the 10, but instead he gives it up, and Kumwa's ready with that left hand up, ready to catch it and finish. So that sends Josiah Jordan James to the free throw line. Seven for nine now on the season and uh, battling back from an injury. He's trying to regain that form that you expected him to have once he got onto campus. Well, you know, and, and he has, has always had such a sweet stroke. You just want something good to happen for that young man because he's very, very talented. Chandler again making plays and finding Kamwa and an early 7-0 start for Tennessee. This is not the type of start that Coach Dickerson wants, you know. They, he, he talked about at shoot-around today that he wants his guys to play solid 30 to 35 minutes. You know, that's really getting, you know, in tune to what's going on. And, and, and this is not happening right now. They're, they're not rotating over. They're getting easy look. Kenny Chandler can do anything that he wants to do right now. The big topic for USC Upstate. Trying to play a full 40 minutes and a turnover for Mozo. Tennessee looking to run. Vescovi underneath the bucket, kicks it out. James wants a three, shy. Chandler. A couple deflections and taken away by Jordan Ganey. Right idea, you know, Kennedy Chandler's got to put a little bit more loft onto that and he'll probably in years to come throw that up because somebody's going to be able to finish that. Really good look for Ganey, doesn't get it to drop. Tennessee getting every rebound right now. Already head on the glass, 6-1. James. Lob again. This one looking for Fulkerson. Much better defense this time around. I think Aldrich was the man that got a piece on it. Much better defense. But you can see how tough it is to guard Tennessee offensively because they run such good cuts and their angles are good. They set jam down screens. And if you're not aware of where you are and where the ball is, where your man is, it can be a living nightmare. They're always looking for that lob off of those plays. Now Ziegler into the game for the first time. Vescovi buries a triple. He has been money from that range throughout his career and a very good look there. Yeah, you know, what you saw from Santiago Vescovi in his very first game when he dropped six threes, he's continued to do though to do that type of stuff. He is absolutely fantastic from the three-point line. James in transition, a 13-0 start for Tennessee after the James Rope Rippler. Man, that, that, that's scary. You know, that's when Tennessee is absolutely at its best when, they, when they're when they shooting threes in transition. On the flip side for Upstate, this is a team that has played 
some big time games this year. South Carolina's already been on the docket. They just played Wake Forest a couple days ago. They're used to these environments, but it hasn't shown here early. And that was one of the things that Coach Dickerson talked with us about before the game. Sometimes they fall into a hole and maybe they play 30 really good minutes, but the first 10 have cost them the game. Yeah, and each game takes on its own personality. You know, you cannot rely on what happened the previous game. You've got to come out with the right mindset that I'm going to score. And that's a good looking three point shot there, but I'm going to make sure that I shut my opponent down defensively. Ziegler quickly the other way, doesn't get it to go after Mozone buried the three. And he's open on the wing again. Has his shot blocked. James, one of the team's leading shot blockers with a stuff. He's got to get that shot off much quicker than that. Kamwa on the block. Misses the shot shy. Alves clears the glass for Upstate. That's a shot that Kamwa's got to make. You know, he shot that one quickly and understand that he has got a decided advantage on the inside. Take your time and put that up strong. Ganey, good ball fake to get Vescovi in the air and drop in the jump shot. That's some of that savviness that Ganey has. He grew up in gyms like these. Yeah, and he is not going to be bothered with a gym atmosphere type like this. Huntley Hatfield misses the shot. The rookie, just 18 years of age, just turned 18 a few months back. Should be playing high school basketball right now. Reclassified as Mozone. Calls for time with 15-24 to play in the first. Five unanswered for Upstate. And they're going to have the basketball after this timeout with a 13-5 Tennessee lead. Vols made five of their first seven. They've missed three straight, but soaring out of the gates early as four different players have scored. You know, moment with him talking about his son and, and um, you know, the one thing that he said that they did not talk about conversing between he and uh, his son was basketball. You know, they talked about everything other than basketball, and I know that they're anxious to, to get this game probably over with tonight so they can get on. And they can enjoy what the, the moment had been. Ganey already has a deuce and the last points for Upstate. Mozone and an illegal screen set by Jatavius Watson. The ball goes back to Tennessee. Upstate had just started to get the offense rolling right before that. They've made their last two shots. Yeah, Jatavius, you know, he, he got that chicken wing out and kind of tripped him up a little bit. You know, stay still. If there's one thing that, you know, this younger generation had, has really gone away from in terms of setting on ball screens, it's just being still, making your body wide and making the defender go around you. Tennessee brings in a few substitutions. Chandler out there with Bailey. Zone defense here for Upstate. Bailey is open in the corner. Misses it badly. He struggled here of late. You know, he's really struggled from that three-point line, and, and he is a much better shooter than what he is showing. Uh, got a great stroke, but, but you know, with anything else, it's about shooting the ball with confidence, and I don't think he's necessarily doing that right now. Bailey had 18 against Upstate last year. This is his first shot here. Stolen away. Huntley Hatfield with a good strip. Yeah, that's that gap side defense. You know, Tennessee is so long that they just affect the passes everywhere. Chandler pulls the trigger from three, and he connects. 37 percent on the freshman phenom. He's, that's a zone buster. Now, now, you know, when you talk about Coach Dickerson, he come out of that timeout, and you go to a two-three zone. Now, how much longer can you afford to to be in that two-three zone? Because you got some shooters out there right now. Ganey, catch, shoot, miss. Mozone, the offensive glass. Working against Bailey. And a foul will be whistled here on Tennessee. A reach in. That's the right call. It's definitely the right call. You know, if you're Kennedy Chandler, you you, you got to go in with two hands. you got to go in with two hands and grab at that ball instead of swiping down. Anytime the officials see that swipe now, it's an automatic call. Tennessee by 11. It's been as many as 13. Ganey off of a screen. Dalvin White, the senior out of Norcross, Georgia, into the game for the first time. Controls for the Spartans. Mozone, catch and shoot three. He's already hit one from out there. This one misses. And now Chandler can run the break. Powell, the Auburn transfer. Huntley Hatfield 
hung in the air, missed the shot, gets his own miss. Look at the length, the size, the strength, and the skill from Huntley Hatfield. Yeah, yeah, you know, he got caught up in the air. He thought he was going to pass it to to uh, Plavsic, and he could not get that pass to Plavsic. But, you know, when you're ultra-talented like that, you, you get your own rebound and you make something happen. I mean, you look at this. You know, he's just a man among men out there. Again, by, by all accounts, he should be a senior in high school, but because he reclassified, I mean, he's playing at a college level, so he's got a man's body, and he's going to learn to use that man's body. He was the number four overall player in 2022, reclassified, and he's the number 19 player. So that just speaks to just how talented he is and already making an impact coming off of 12 points in the win against UNC Greensboro on Saturday. Yeah, that just speaks to the, the type of talent that he has. When you, know, when you, when you drop off by 15 and, and you change a year, I mean, that, that is absolutely phenomenal. Foul shot good from Alves. He makes a pair to trim the margin to an 11-point game. Tennessee so far shooting 50% in the game. A different defensive look here for Upstate. Chandler will walk it across. 20 on the shot clock. And you see right now, Coach Barnes very liberal with his bench. You know, you got Jamon Mayshack out there right now who is earning more and more playing time. Great turnaround there by John Fulkerson. Fulkerson, second all-time in Tennessee history, 141st game. He'll tie Wayne Chisholm for the program record on Saturday against Memphis. Fulkerson, what an amazing career he's put together. Carl Malone watch list this year, second team all SEC. He's sixth in UT history in efficiency, 56% from the floor in this game, number 141 for him. And he just needs more touches. You know, in my opinion, it's one of the things that Tennessee has not done well, and that's get the ball into the paint. Mr. Goodlow coming off of a torn ACL last year, tickles the twine from deep. Plopcic loses the basketball. Aldridge got a piece. And here comes Upstate, trailing by 10 here in the opening half. Goodlow gets underneath the bucket, throws it off of the hands of Mayshack. At least they say that. Yeah, I think they're going to change this because obviously he, he was going out of bounds, landed out of bounds, and the ball hit his shoulder. So definitely the right call by the official. They overturn it. And possession to Tennessee. Balls. 33 point attempts per game this year. Three of six from deep in this one. They're doing a much better job, and that's what Rick Barnes wanted to see. Get the ball inside. Chandler, great bounce pass. Kamwa yeah. again with a two handed flush. <laughs> but it all starts with Kennedy Chandler. Didn't settle for that three point shot with a subtle bounce pass, a pocket pass, and a flush by Kumwa. Great strength underneath. And a good answer. Goodlow, who entered this game 4 of 18 from deep, has a pair here early. Yeah, Goodlow says, I'll trade your two for a three. Powell wants the answer. Can't convert. Wants another chance at it. Second time yeah. the charm for it. The Auburn transfer. Yeah, man, that kid needs more minutes, too. You know, it's quite the dilemma, Michael. What do you, what do, you do if you're Coach Barnes, <laughs> man? You, 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 you got another guy. You pull in another guy. This guy wants some minutes. Man, it's all about, again, separating yourselves and how hard you play on the defensive end. That's how much playing time you're going to get. Aldridge breaking to the bucket. Good block by Kamwa. Tenth in the SEC in shot blocks. Goodlow doesn't convert there, and Fulkerson is fouled. Yeah. And it brings us to a break in the action. Tennessee lighting the lamp here early, not only from distance, but Kennedy Chandler setting the stage. Kamwa with some theatrics and the balls with an early lead here in Knoxville. Aim to, to almost tripling that. You know, he's done something right, but because he's playing with a chip on his shoulder because no one recruited him. And so when you have a kid like that that's gone through the rigors, that plays his tail off every single night, man, you root for kids like that. He has a three-pointer in this basketball game. Upstate has weathered the early storm, 13-0 to start the game for Tennessee, but Upstate has won the last little stretch. Ball's looking to run. James. Another different lineup here for Rick Barnes. He has really cycled in the depth that he has, embarrassment of riches in terms of talent. 
Yeah, you know, and they have gone to that 2-3 zone, and Tennessee has knocked down two three-pointers. So, that again, that's when Tennessee is exceedingly dangerous, when they're knocking down those threes. And now Coach Dickerson is like, what do you do? Do you stay in the zone, or do you close out man-to-man? -man? Ziegler, the freshman, canning the tray. James the steal. And a run out here for the balls. Huntley Hatfield. Oh, Great pass nice underneath. Pass. How about Kamwa? Third dunk already. This time set up by the rookie. Yeah, that's really easy. But you can see the maturation process right now before our very eyes with Brandon Huntley Hatfield. Spin move, didn't settle for the tough shot, dumped it off for a great flush by Kumwa. Good low, good bounce pass underneath. Watson able to stuff it in there. Just three points per game for Watson, eight minutes. Seeing an expanded role here early in this game. Good strong finish by Watson. It absorbed some contact and went through that contact for the finish. Ziegler's running the point. He's a freshman, the shortest Tennessee player since 1979. You know, and good for Zakai Ziegler. Zakai Ziegler is probably one of the toughest players uh, you know, Coach Barnes continues to talk about Zakai Ziegler and his toughness. But, man, when, when you have this type of kid that's growing before our eyes, that's dishing it to Kumwa, man, and look for special things to come from Brantley Huntley Hatfield. Most presence for Tennessee. They've made six of the last eight shots. And Rick Barnes would be delighted with what he's seen from his team. We asked him before the game, 33-point attempts per game this year. We asked him. Are you happy with that number? He said, I want quality shots. If it's a three-pointer, great. But we do need to find that interior presence. And so far, Tennessee finding that. Kamwa has eight. Yeah, you know, Kamwa, in, in, when, when you look at someone like that who, who you know, he can command the paint, and, and, and you see his confidence growing with every single basketball game as well, you know, good for him, all the work that he's putting in during the offseason and the early part of this season. Dribble drives being shut down right now by Tennessee's defense, but a foul is committed here by the balls. And I think that possession, looking back on it, is one of the reasons why Tennessee is so elite defensively. They've given up 54 points or less in each of the last four basketball games. They're so good at moving their feet and shutting down gaps. They're, they're very good at moving their feet, but they're better at playing help side defense and shutting down the gaps, as you alluded to. You know, you know you, you've got to be strong with the ball if you're playing against the Tennessee defense. And furthermore, you've got to be smart with the passes. Because when you think a guy's open more times than not he's not because the help side defense is going to be right there pair of misses that time around from Alves now Ziegler James ball movement underneath plop teach good move in the right hand hook shot yeah. drops in Good move there by the Serbian to get his first points of the day. Good move by Uros. You know, that's good for him because, you know, he wants some playing time too, man. He's got that big body, plays good defensively, moves his feet well, man. If he can just learn that little baby hook, man, he can be absolutely deadly. Tennessee has opened up its largest lead of the game. 17 points. Look at them just fly all over the ball. The head's on that screen. That's a quick switch. Now you got help side defense. I mean, look at that. It's just a block there. It's just a living nightmare for opposing teams to come into this venue and expect to get an open look. Well, you're not allowed inside of the three-point arc, it feels like, against Tennessee because they do such a good job. Once you take one dribble inside, they're shutting you down. And a great length there by James to block that shot. Very difficult sledding right now for Upstate, shooting 31% in the game. Upstate's going back to a man-to-man. -to -man. Look for Tennessee to start running their sets once again. Bailey, pull-up jump shot. They want to see a lot more of that. He's really struggled in the last seven games. Six of his last 26 entering this game. If he can start making shots like that, he could be that game changer for Tennessee had 13 games a year ago with double figures hasn't quite gotten into that rhythm this year no and, and you want to see him do more than just shoot the three you know coach Barnes talks about his defensive tenacity or lack thereof at times because he lets his offense dictate what he does on defense so he needs to shoot the ball from the two range sometimes Mozone misses the three-pointer been nearly two and a half minutes without points for upstate Tennessee's on a 13-2 scoring run 
again for a pull-up jump shot. Too strong this time around. Good shot, though. Good screen by Uros. Came off of that screen and curled it at Bailey. That's a good-looking shot. Tennessee had made five of six prior to that one. Alves around a screen. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Good cut from Ganey. Fall away shot doesn't fall though. That's a nice cut and a shot he normally makes. But, but you know why he missed that? Because he's so tired. He's running around and, and, and guys are running him off of screen. So he gets so tired it becomes difficult to knock down those easy shots. Plavich underneath missing the shot. And Bailey called for the personal foul on the reach in. Well, Tennessee has found its rhythm. 13-2 scoring run to open up a 20-point lead for the first time today. Next step against a Texas Tech or a Memphis or an Arizona because he's played so well against the ETSUs of the world. But then when he got to Texas Tech, he didn't play so well or Villanova. So you want to see him take that next step and, and score at all levels, which he can do against all competitions. His defense has been pesky as well. Tennessee already 14 points in the paint. Goodlow getting to the bucket, drawing the foul. The scoring drought for Upstate has reached three and a half minutes. And that's what Goodlow's got to do. You know, when, when you're looking at uh, uh, the fact that you're down by 19, you're in that danger zone, instead of settling for a three-point shot, get something going to the basket. So kudos to Goodlow for getting to the free throw line for two shots. Yeah, they've settled for far too many three-pointers. 11 of their 18 shots from the floor in this game have come from long range. Yeah, but, but if you get to the... Free throw line, Michael, you got to finish those. You know, they're, they're 0 for their last three, man. They got to put these in. Goodlow does convert on the second foul shot. Here comes Mayshack the other way, and he's called for an offensive foul. Barreled into a defender. Mayshack is getting a little more playing time here to start off this game than he has in the last few. Yeah, Coach Barnes is true to his word. You know, he talked about the fact that Huntley Hatfield was going to be the first big off the bench tonight, which he was, and that Jemash Mayshack has commanded more playing time because he's played so hard. Langley, his first points of the game and his first action of the day, the redshirt sophomore from Atlanta. Good looking move. You know, you, sometimes when you got a shot blocker in your face, you want to make sure that you use that basketball goal as a, as a defender, and that's what he did. Tennessee on top by 16 here in the first half. Once again, doing the job defensively and the ball shooting 54% from the field. They started this game on a 13-0 scoring run. It's a potent lineup on the floor right now for Tennessee with Ziegler and Chandler out there. Ultra difficult to get the ball across the timeline against these two. Huntley Hatfield and Kamwa on the blocks. And you got Quentin DeBouge, you know, with this first action tonight. And, you know, when you look at a body like Quentin's got, man, this kid can flat out play as well. It's just not enough minutes to go around. Chandler turns the corner, doesn't get the shot to fall. And Huntley Hatfield can't clear the glass. I think Tennessee fans were hoping for a foul there, but Hat Huntley Hatfield couldn't control it. And the Vols have missed their last four. Yeah, you know. Brandon Huntley Hatfield did everything that he needed to do there and did not get the, you know, the benefit of the doubt in terms of coming down with that and getting the foul call. Tennessee on top by 16 despite not scoring in the last two and a half minutes. Brazil, Ganey, good ball fake, opening up Brazil for a three-pointer. And those shots, too, you have to make those if you get that kind of wide-open look. Yeah, those are going to be the cleanest looks that you're going to see a Tennessee defense give up. Kamwa, boy, is he feeling it. How about his growth from the long-range shot? One of five in his first 54 career games. He's now eight for 14 from long range this year. Now, if you were to have told me, Michael, that he was going to be the most consistent three-point shooter on the Tennessee basketball <laughs> team, I'd have said you're crazy. Nice take at the other end from Alves. Right over Kamala to finish. Chandler, though, just never takes his foot off the gas. Kamala yeah. dominating on the post. 13 points, a game high here early. And Coach Dickerson is marching up and down his sideline looking for someone. Get this kid off of the glass. 
Tom Waugh came in averaging eight points and six rebounds. He's at 13 points and five boards in the first half. Lang lays. Brazil. Shot clock hits 10. And Brazil slides to the ground. And a turnover for Upstate. Olivier Kamwa, the Finnish flash, as they call him, is making everything work right now. A long distance shot there and a 19 point lead for the balls. This type of basketball game in those type of big time environments, if they do so, man, look out. Sky's the limit for this Tennessee basketball team. His best games have come against mid-majors, zero points against Villanova, seven, but he fouled out against Carolina, three against Colorado, two against Texas Tech. So that is the big question. Can he do it against primetime competition? Yeah, that's the next step in his maturation process, just growing game by game and being, being really consistent. He's on the bench. Kennedy Chandler misses a three-pointer shy, one of the rare misses from Tennessee. He's been 50% from deep. A recycle and Chandler, top 15 NBA prospect with a reverse layup, seven for the rookie. Yeah, you know, his game is just so smooth. You know, he, he fakes that three-point shot, then he goes up, and you think he's going to pass it to a to a teammate, and he lays it up offside with a fantastic finish. He has four assists as well. 13th ranked NBA prospect, according to ESPN. That was upstate, close out this half, big final three minutes. Alves tried the backdoor cut. Good job from Dibouge to steal it away. And he goes coast to coast to draw the foul. And the native of France will hit the free throw line for the second time this season. You know, it, it's 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 pretty good. Look at this behind the back pass by Ferguson. <laughs> now, you tell me whether or not he meant to do it, but it leads to this right here, man. Just a fantastic finish. But going back to Quentin, he, I mean, this guy is sitting, he's he's on the bench. He's that deep on the bench. But but yet, you look at a body like that, and you look at the fact that he can score, he can shoot, he can rebound, and he can defend. I mean, it, you got to carve out minutes somewhere for this kid. He played in just one of the last six games, played six minutes against Presbyterian. And he's earning some time out there on the hardwood right now. He's played three minutes here in the first half. This is a pair of foul shots, though. Fulkerson, a recycle. Vescovi wants the three and converts. Yeah, Tennessee didn't want that two from the free throw line. They just wanted a chance to kick it out for the three. Seven three-pointers in the first half for Tennessee. And boy, what a difference a year makes. Last year when Tennessee beat Upstate by 20, Tennessee 5 of 16 from three in the entire game. They're 7 of 14 in the first half. And they're just turning Upstate over. I mean, you know, they, Upstate's got to take care of the basketball. Eighth giveaway for the Spartans. Tennessee has opened up its largest lead of the day at 24. Vescovi, the lob, Holy Hatfield, <laughs> elevates and detonates for the stop. And, you know, coming off a jam down screen, man, you saw it coming. Santiago with a full head of steam to get to the basket. He just subtly throws it up. <laughs> Hunley Hatfield, a man among men. You know, and in, 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 in before long, Brandon Hunley Hatfield is going to be challenging Kumwa and Fulkerson for more and more minutes. Well, that's what games like these are for, to try to get into that rotation against Memphis and Arizona over the next week. I mean, you look at this defense that Kennedy Chandler is playing right now. It's just so difficult for you to get into your sets. Number one ranked point guard in the country coming out of last year's class. Upstate has not gotten the ball inside of the arc, and they settle for a three-pointer from Quinton Hodge that rolls off. Vescovi thought about a three. Good hesitation. Volkerson, the offensive glass, and he sticks it in. Pulled me on the spot, man. That's, that's, just, that's being relentless on that offensive glass and being at the right place, right time. Deflection again from Tennessee. Look at Volkerson. He's all over the court right now. Chandler. Fulkerson, good backdoor cut. Vescovi, what a pass out to Chandler. Bam. 
<laughs> a twine tickler from the rookie. <laughs> you know, if you're Coach Barnes, it, you, you, you're going to have to find something to be upset about if, if you're Coach Barnes, because that's what coaches do, right? <laughs> but even Coach Barnes has to be happy. I mean, look at him. He's sitting over there with his arms crossed right now, because when you look at this spectacular pass by Biscovy, to a wide open Kennedy Chandler. Kennedy Chandler is just so smooth, man. That's just money. Tennessee 51 points in the first half. That's a tough stick in right there from Quentin Hodge. Putting it off the window. Boy, they needed that. Ending a 14 nothing run. Well, maybe this is one of those moments where Rick Barnes will bring his troops over to perhaps complain about that. That last shot there out of everything that happened, but Tennessee has just done such a great job this season. A team that is maturing them elevate from an 18th ranked team in the country where they stand right now to potentially a top 10 team. Yeah, you know, we, a lot of people watching that Texas Tech game kind of jumped off the bandwagon a little bit. And, and, and the thing about basketball is one sh one game does not make a season, unlike football. So, you know, look for these guys to utilize that game and put that away, store it, and they're going to get better game by game because of that Texas Tech game. Losses in December don't mean much when you can improve over the next three months, and that's what Dave Dickerson is hoping for his Spartans. Games like these to prepare his team for big south play. White got poked in the eye. And the officials will grant him timeout. 22 seconds to play in the first half. There's 12 on the shot clock. And upstate, 8 of 24 from the floor. But turnovers, 9 of them have led to 17 Tennessee points. Yeah, you, you got to make sure you get a good shot right here. You got 12 seconds now, 11, now 10 on the shot clock. Make sure that you get something going to the basket. There was Watson going to the basket, and he draws the foul. That was a tough pass there from White, long time in the air, and just showed the good roll there from Watson and a good catch underneath to get him to the free throw block. Yeah, you had Tennessee that came out and hedged on that ball screen. And, and Coach Barnes, this is something that he won't be excited about, that help side defense didn't get there in time and allowed for this free throw opportunity. Upstate hasn't taken advantage, though, just three of six at the line in the game. And Watson, a 44% foul shooter, made that one look easy. To shoot the ball at 44%, man, you got to be doing something wrong. But if you look at, at the way that he shoots the ball, look at the stroke. A lot of times when you're watching young kids play, your follow-through will tell you everything you need to know. But watch this stroke. That's a good-looking stroke, good-looking follow-through. I mean, those are two perfect free throws. 44%, you could have pulled me. 12 seconds to play in the half. Ziegler has it with eight. The 5'9 rookie from New York, Vescovi to the paint. Left-handed teardrop, doesn't fall, but a nearly flawless opening half of basketball here from Thompson Bowling Arena. The ball shoot 54% in the first half, Steve, and Rick Barnes a lot to be happy with it. Next game. Yeah, you want to build that momentum, and for Tennessee, you started the game 13 unanswered. Late in the first half, you had 14 unanswered. Those two scoring runs, the difference in the game, plus 27 here as we start the second half. Well, you asked about aggression. How about a little trap in the backcourt to start it off? And a steal. Chandler. Oh, well, I, I guess that answered my question. <laughs> Chandler gets a running start to the bucket, throws it underneath Kamwa. We highlighted him at halftime. Here they are to start off the second half. Man, how many times have we said that this guy is just playing a spectacular basketball game? Great dish by Kennedy Chandler, though. That, you can't say enough about his passing ability. The other side for Upstate, this was a program that when Dave Dickerson took over, they were the worst team in the country. 353 out of 353. Ganey misses the shot. Offensive rebound, Alves. Upstate one of the foul, no call. Chandler now gets a run out. Life is just so difficult for the Sparties right now, man. You know, looks that you normally make against lesser competition, you get those to fall, but, but not here tonight. James just rattles out a three-pointer. Brazil, Mozone, who hasn't really gotten going in this game. Three points, averaging 14 a game. Team's leading score. Brazil. Ganey 
a good look for a great three-point shooter, and Ganey misses another one. Jordan, one of six in the game, entered play nearly 50% on the year. And you, and you wonder if Ganey is just not, you know, if he's feeling the effects right now of, of playing in front of your dad, having all of your family here, you got the weight of the world on your shoulders, because right now you want to prove a couple of different things. A, I could have been playing at this level at Tennessee. And B, Dad, I want to make you proud. So you want something good to go. Uh, you want something good to go for this young man. And you forgot C, his family that is here wearing USC Upstate gear. <laughs> You're in enemy territory. They're rooting for Jordan and not the coach, Justin. <laughs> you know, talking to Coach Ganey, there is one There is one in that family that's rooting against <laughs> Justin Ganey, though, and that's his other, his brother. He plays at West High School here locally in Knoxville. Yeah, Jason, he's a freshman at West High School playing JV and varsity tonight. Fulkerson in the paint. His first miss of the game. Vescovi wants a three. Good hustle from Mozon. Look at the ability to get in to the baseline to save it in. Yeah, and if you are coach, if you are Coach Dickerson, you got to be ultra happy with that type of effort because you know what? Okay, you're, you're down big time. You're down by almost 30 points. But this tells me that, hey, coach, I still want to play. I'm going to play hard, and I'm not going to give up. And then conversely on the other end, man, I'm going to attack that rim with authority. I didn't get the finish, but I get to go to the line for two. It leads to a run out in that situation. Still can't make free throws. Five of nine in the game. Last year, because of COVID, this team was a preseason number three in the Big South. They missed 28 of 32 preseason practices. Basically needed the first month or two to practice in game situations to get there. Then entering this season, three players hit the transfer portal. Chandler with a beautiful pass from the backcourt for a cutting Fulkerson to stick it off the window. And in addition to that, you know, Coach has had some, you know, uh, his wife's got some health issues, man. So just a nightmare type of scenario. But one of the last things that he said to us today is that the team is coming back. You know, they're turning that corner. They're getting better, and they're getting better and better. Good defense there by Fulkerson. Really shuffling his feet to get over and draw the charge. And that's been something that he has been excellent, excellent at this season. Sixth charge that he's drawn on the year. Well, you, you, you give it to Fulkerson on the offensive end because he ran the floor like a gazelle and gets that outlet pass and finishes. And then on the other end, he moves his feet, takes a charge defensively. Ganey commits the foul at the other end of the floor. Tennessee has scored all of the points so far here in the second half, all four of them. Upstate missed its first three shots and both foul shots. Well, now, if you're Coach Barnes, you're looking at this unit on the floor right now, right? So, so you're looking to see who improves, who gets better, who shares the ball, who handles the ball, who knocks down shots. But you're also keeping that mind. In the back of your mind, you're wondering, okay, who am I going to bring in collectively as a unit off of this bench, and will they keep up that same type of effort? Turnover, unforced error for the balls. Number six in the game. You can live with that. Especially when you're turning upstate over 11 times and scoring 19 points off of those giveaways. Margin is hit 31, the largest of the day. This has been the problem for upstate in the half court offense. Finally, a post up, Mo Zone. Tough ball away shot, but silky smooth for the senior from South Carolina. Could have used some more of that early on in this game. That's a good looking post up. They got him into the post, got to that sweet spot. Good fadeaway. Bodies on the deck again for Upstate. Mozone did a wonderful job of establishing right there. Didn't settle for a tough shot. You know, although that was a little bit of a tough shot, a little turnaround over Josiah Jordan James. But at the same time, he's got to use that girth he's got. Use that muscle and, 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 and bully ball someone, right? You know, get to that basket. 6'6", 205, and his teammate, Quentin Hodge, is down on the ground after the held ball. The possession is staying with Tennessee with 18 on the shot clock here to start off this second half. If you're Coach Barnes, you, you look at, uh, uh, you certainly hope this young man's okay.
But you I think, you know, something tells me he'll be back in this basketball game tonight. You know, because this right here is going to be the largest crowd that they're going to play in front of all year long. And the last thing you want to do is to get an injury and have to sit out the rest of the game. And I want to play in this type of atmosphere. These are the atmospheres at the end of the year you want to play in the NCAA tournament. Foul whistled on Upstate on the back down from Kamwa. First time tonight, Michael, that we've seen Kamwa be on the post and have to make his own move. So, you know, you're looking forward to seeing him mature there and make those type of moves. Lob to Kamwa, and he's going to be called for the offensive foul. Coach Barnes is saying what I'm thinking. Was he not in the circle? I believe that the rule is if you're in the circle and you initiate your move, the circle is irrelevant. If you start your move outside of the circle, that's when the, the foul is whistled. So Kamwa, they're saying, oh, that is close, though. He, yeah. he was slightly outside, but I guess one foot in the circle, you're in the circle. Yeah, you're in the circle. And, I, you know, I, I believe that uh, that was a difficult, difficult call there. But they don't, they don't pay me to make this call. <laughs> They don't pay you to read the uh, <laughs> the uh, officiating manual. That's probably five, six hundred pages worth. Mozone, a little short there. Kamwa Fleck in influenced the shot. Those are gimmies that you gotta have. You know, I had a coach that called those bunnies. You you gotta make those. Kamwa again underneath. Great post position. Chandler sets him up and one for Kamwa. Well, it's been a big time game for the native of Finland. He's now eight of nine from the floor, 17 points in the game, showing all of the skill set on the pirouette underneath and a 31 point Tennessee lead. Selves very valuable. And when you do things like that, that well, man, you're gonna get a bunch of playing time. Something that he's taught his son, who's a freshman on this USC up state squad. Kamwa at the line, converts the three-point play. Nearly flawless game for Kamwa, 18 points, seven rebounds. Glad you're tuning in for this basketball game here from Thompson Bowling Arena with Steve Hamer, Michael Watrain. Great to have you with us tonight. Brazil the other way, misses a shot. Tennessee looking to get out in transition. Good transition by Brazil, though. Just didn't knock it down. Ziegler and Chandler, you expect to see a little more of these two guards on the floor for Tennessee as the season goes on. Bailey misses it wide left. Huntley Hatfield, though, he's been really strong underneath, and he gets second chance points for Tennessee. I really like this lineup, though. You know, Victor Bailey missed everything on that three point shot, but at the same time, you don't see this lineup very often where you have Victor Bailey playing with the two younger guards, and then you got Brandon Huntley Hatfield with the body and the size on the interior. Wide open look for White, top of the key, but he missed it. Ziegler catching and running. Bailey pulling up in transition, misses another mid-range jumper. He's really scuffling tonight. You know, he had the one uh, make in the first half, but man, he's really scuffling. One of five now in the game. White, another really good look. This time, he converts from distance, 41% on the year. He drops in his first points of the game. And if you're Coach Barnes, you, you're, you're okay with the fact that Bailey's missing shots, but at the same time, he gave up that open three. This is another one, three straight misses for the Oregon transfer. Hodge back onto the floor after that injury, stuffs it in and draws the foul. Just like you said, big time atmosphere, you're not gonna be on the bench for very long. Not gonna be on the bench very long. You know, and that's a good dribble drive right there. Made himself parallel to the baseline, which created that atmosphere so that he could not be blocked by Huntley Hatfield. Gave the head and shoulders fake and got to the free throw line. Quick five unanswered for Upstate. Yeah, good utilization of that head and shoulders fake. If you're Huntley Hatfield, you, you're twice his size. Just be straight up and be vertical. Wait for him to make that first move, then reject it. Hodge is now 11 of 12 at the free throw line this season as he converts. 6-0 run for Upstate. Huntley Hatfield, a rare pull the trigger from long range. Just his fourth attempt of the year. Another recycle for the Vols. 
Ziegler wants a three. Powell barrels into Huntley Hatfield. It leads to a two on one run out. Hodge runs into Ziegler. Excellent defense by the freshman from Long Island. He set his feet early and he draws the charge. That was great defense by the guy Ziegler, man. I, I, you know, I, dream, I don't even dream that I'm quick. You know, I wish that I was that quick in my dreams, man. When you can slide your feet and take a charge like that, man, that's absolutely fantastic. Rick Barnes said earlier that he would call Ziegler and ask him, are you playing inside or outside today? Because in the Big Apple, that's what you have to do. Very few players like that in the country anymore. Well, he talks about... The fact that, you know, Zakai is one of those throwback players that plays the ball, you know, plays the game the right way, loves the game. Nashak, look at that, slaloming through the right side of the lane and a little teardrop. Slaloming is very apropos right there, man. This kid with that type of body, man, you know, kudos to Coach G, the Tennessee uh, basketball strength and conditioning coach, because these guys come in, they're ready to play. Watson with a miss. Nashak, who continues to get more playing time in this game with a rebound. Siegler sprinting but missing the shot. Brazil. White, a very good look, but wide left. Miss put back by Goodlow. Well, Upstate starting to find that flow in this game, but still down by 30 after Tennessee scored the game's first 13 and have led by as many as 34. But you still, you like the fight. You like the effort. They're not quitting. They're not giving up. You know, they could keep their head down, but they're not doing that right now. Good defense that time around underneath the bucket by Goodlow against Huntley Hatfield that was looking for the lob. But a blocking foul will be called, and Meshack will head to the free throw line. Now you look at Jemai Meshack on that left-hand dribble drive going towards the basket. He went with a purpose. He went meaning business, and because of that, he gets the payoff and gets two free throws at the free throw line. Talk about an athletic family for the freshman from Fontana, California. His mother ran track at UNLV. His father scored 1,000 points at Loyola Marymount, and his brother played cornerback at Arizona. And now here he is at Tennessee, and certainly a bright future for a six foot four, 196 pound rookie. When you, when you're Coach Barnes, and you have the type of prowess in terms of basketball knowledge and how long you've been doing it, when you can get a kid to sign 2,500 miles away without ever having stepped foot onto a campus, you know you're doing the things the right way. Mayshack had scored eight points all season. He does miss this free throw. Has three in this game. Lead back to 31. Upstate starting to get into a little more run and shoot basketball game. Great look underneath. Ganey, though, misses it. Good defense from Powell to get a piece. Good catch up defense by Justin Powell. Allen Auburn transfer. Looking at this lineup, Michael, that, that's in the game right now, this is a lineup that you haven't seen this year with, with you know, the ultimate size there with Fulke on the Fulke smash. These guys, man, he, he comes Barnes, this man got so much weaponry that he can have at his disposal. Eighth assist for Chandler, setting up Fulkerson. It's the highlight reel type of play these fans were looking for. And then Chandler, a run out this time. Alves on his tail. Gets a piece, and Chandler can't convert. Coach Barnes still got the arms folded because I guarantee you what he's thinking right now, he should have gone stronger. And it leads to a deuce at the other end. <laughs> 65-34 Tennessee. Chandler nearing a double-double. Ten points, eight assists. Volkerson lobs to Plopchich, and he drops it in. Big to big, man. You know, that's my kind of game, Michael. Big to big. You have that size out there, and we've seen big to big passing in this game. Chandler. Nearly had it pilfered by Ganey, but he's going to be the guilty party on the foul. Tennessee leads by 33, and the passing, Chandler, no look underneath with the right hand. 
And Fulkerson, one of the most efficient players in program history, drops it in. It's all balls here in the second half. Tonight, so there's nothing he can do about that. But if you're Coach Dickerson, you want to still preach to your kids that, look, we're playing for the next game. We're not going to see anybody like Tennessee the rest of the schedule. So what we do tonight matters. Chandler misses the foul shot. Rebound to Guinea. Well, here in the second half, Tennessee is only leading 16-10. So it has been a much tighter affair here in the second half. Alves, a clean look at a three. 16-10, you say. 16-13. How about that? Chandler running to the bucket. Extra pass. Kamwa. He hits another trifecta. Third time this season, he's two of two from long range, and he has 21 points. It's one thing, Michael, to just 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 dunk the ball all the time. But this kid is scoring at all three levels: mid-range, long range, and short inside the basket. And he gets the benefit of a call. Thought for a second they weren't going to blow it, but Langlace is called for the offensive foul. Coach Dickerson's beside himself over there because he <laughs> thinks that that was, you know, could have been a flop, which it very well could have been. And, and it was a kind of delayed thing at that. Chandler matching his season high with eight assists. Great ball handling skills. Off of a screen, throws it out. The boom. Oh! Down with the right hand. Sometimes you just got to rise up, Michael. The flying Frenchman to the bucket. <laughs> and this kid's on your bench. <laughs> Look at Brazil at the other end. The little acrobatics. <laughs> what more can you say about this? You think the kid's going to take the three? No, 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 no. I'm going to take it in and finish with authority. Wow. During, during shoot around today, he was trying to get some alley oops in. Well, he doesn't need a teammate to throw an oop. He just elevates this time around and drops the hammer. I, and I 17 see. minutes all season. Yeah. And, and this is a guy coming off of your bench. And I, I, did, I didn't see one Sparty rise up in that because I think they saw the writing on the wall. <laughs> His kids come in You're with trying, some bad intentions. Trying to get out of the poster in that situation. <laughs> Chandler working around the screen. Kamwa. Fulkerson with a really soft touch underneath. He's in the double figures quietly. Ten points, six rebounds, three assists. We haven't really talked much about him tonight either. Just a pedestrian ho-hum night, you know, for John Fulkerson. Night in, night out, man. You can count on him to do all of the dirty work and score and rebound and lead this team. 946 career points. Closing in on the 53rd all-time Tennessee player with 1,000. Chandler. Chandler, one assist shy of his first career double-double. Powell along the baseline. A pilfer, however, from Jernigan. Justin Powell made a great pass. You know, just got to make it a little softer there. Don't throw it with such authority. Three Tennessee players in double figures. Everyone that is suited up has scored. Alves stuffs it back in with the right hand. No quit in Alves, man. You know, you miss the first opportunity, you go back and you get something. Uh, you know, you, you can hang your hat on this kid's worth eth work ethic every single night, man. He's going to go get it. Chandler oh. to Fulkerson and another Folky smash and a double double for the rookie. Ten points, ten assists. Just too easy for Kennedy Chandler, man. He, you know, he sees the game differently than a freshman. You expect these type of plays from a junior or senior, but because he's a freshman and he sees the floor that well, you know, there's no wonder that he is that high up on the prospect board in terms of the next level. A lot of people have compared him to a Chris Paul. Some have compared him to Kyrie Irving. And he is living up to the billing here in his rookie campaign. Distributing the ball at a high pace and a career high level here in this one. Another lob. Fulkerson can't finish the flush. Chandler settles in for a three, and he has a string shredder. <laughs> Olivier Kumwa, you, you think that he's going to take the three, but he's being ultra 
ultra, you know, unselfish tonight and getting everybody else involved. Tennessee has made six consecutive shots from the floor. The margin has swelled to a game high 36. Chandler. He wants to re rack here. 13 points in the game. He's calling for the pick and roll with focus and focus and say, look, kid, just do it on your own. Look. And he does do it on his own. <laughs> little spin cycle, a little fall away jumper. What a night for the freshman. Kennedy Chandler. He's scoring, he's rebounding, but he has some dazzling dimes setting up Fulkerson with a two-handed punch. And it's all balls right now from Rocky Top. 2.1 assist to turnovers entering this game. That's as a rookie, and that's playing against teams like Villanova and Texas Tech and Colorado, North Carolina. So impressive what we're seeing from Kennedy Chandler right now for Tennessee that has opened up a 38-point lead for the first time in this game. Now, Kennedy Chandler, man, you you expect this in games like this. You, you, when the lights are brightest, that's when he's going to play the best. You talk about a big-time matchup this upcoming <laughs> weekend. You know, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but, man, you know, playing his hometown team, look out. That'll be a fun one to watch in Nashville. Bridgestone Arena will have Memphis. And Tennessee, Memphis, four consecutive losses entering tonight's game against sixth-ranked Alabama. But when you're up by 38 and there's six minutes to go and you can have this kind of talent on the floor, you're deep. Well, I, I was just about to say that. I mean, you, you call the dogs off, right? Well, Coach Barnes <laughs> has called the dogs off. You look at who's out on the floor right now. You got you got freshmen abounding. You got Victor Bailey, who's wanting more playing time, but he's scuffing from the three-point line. You got Uros, who, who just turned the ball over just now. He's called the dogs off, but Tennessee is absolutely playing their best basketball in this atmosphere tonight. And that is a direct reflection of Coach Barnes recruiting. I mean, all the guys can play, man. You know, again, we talk about divvying up minutes. You better play defensively. You better play defensively well if you want to get some more playing time. Watson tried to use the ball fake, couldn't drop it in. Tennessee about five and a half minutes away from improving to 28-0 all time against the Big South. Rick Barnes is 22-0 in his coaching career. And the ball's on top. They've made seven in a row. Upstate hasn't scored in the last two minutes. Huntley Hatfield on the baseline. 6.7 boards for the freshman. Can't control his own miss. Tennessee will be called for the foul. Well, if you're upstate in this game, you got about five minutes left. Second half, it started to slide a little bit, but it's still 30 to 19 here in the second half. Two big scoring runs in the first half. The season for them starts in the next few weeks as they get ready for Big South play. Yeah, you know, and you you knew that it was going to be tough. You're talking to Coach Dickerson. You knew it was going to be tough for them to come in in this environment and win this basketball game. He expected them to play well. He expected Tennessee to be tough because he said Coach Barnes does what he does. He recruits at a high level. His players can play defense. They can score. But you're, you're coaching again in this environment. You're coaching for the next game. Offenses flowed a little better here in the second half, but trying to beat the buzzer. Brazil misses it, then Mozone. Mows over Huntley Hatfield to stick it back in. Frustrating night overall for the team's leading scorer. That's just points number six and seven. Frustrating night to say the least, but there is no quit in this kid. You look at that last basket, Huntley Hatfield did not do such a good job. Again, it's just staying on the floor. You know, you don't have to be a shot blocker. There's very few shot blockers anymore, especially in the post. Just stay with that principle of verticality and make them score over you. So the Arizona State transfer, Uros Plavcic, will hit the free throw line, make the first. He's got a good looking stroke, too, from the free throw line. Again, you, you talk about follow through, Michael. That will tell you everything you need to know about what you're doing right or what you're doing wrong. And when you got a good looking stroke like this kid does from the free throw line, you know, that can carry over to, to all facets of the game in terms of shooting the ball from the post, from the perimeter. He's played basketball at a high level, too. He's competed against reigning NBA MVP Nikola Jokic. He's the sixth seven footer in Tennessee history. 
the last one, Steve. Do you know who the last one was? It could be me. It was you. Wow. It was you. Wow. 1992 to 1996. You know, back when I played, man, we had Dinosaur Park. You know, we, we didn't have Pratt Pavilion <laughs> over there, the basketball facility. It was Dinosaur Parking then. Some gravel lots back in the day. <laughs> Siegler, another pill for a steal now in seven straight games and a leave off for Bailey who stuffs it home. That's what you want to see if you're Coach Barnes, Victor Bailey, getting something to go into the basket tonight. But what a great steal and a great assist by Zakai Ziegler. Talk about a great pass. Brazil, a perfect look underneath for Alves. But the team's leading scorer in this game bobbles it. Bobic finishes at the other end. Look at the big man run the floor. You know, we run the floor a lot. We just don't get we don't get the payoff. You know, that's a good job by Jamon Mayshack keeping his head up and making a great pass. Another pilfer. Tennessee has now forced 18 turnovers. Ziegler, Bailey again, rising to drop it home with two hands. Victor Bailey with the ups tonight. That's fantastic. Again, you want to see him. Be consistent. That's the thing, Michael. Be consistent. Seven unanswered points for Tennessee. And it's all Vols right now. They've made nine of the last ten shots from the floor. Ziegler starting it with the defense. Bailey finishing it with the offense. Hustle for Tennessee. Blowing out a 43-point lead. They don't care about the, 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 the individual statistics. They want the W's. They want to make sure that it's not about me. And that's what they live by. Enom, it's not about me. 12 players have played tonight. All of them have scored. Nobody's played more than 25 minutes. And some of the subs coming off the bench. Kent Gilbert and Brock Jancic. Jonas Adu out there as well. And, and, and by the way, again, you talk about, you know, Coach Barnes, pull, you know, he pulled the dogs off. Well, I, I did. You got another <laughs> seven-footer in the game right now. Jonas Adu, you know, he, he wants some playing time as well. He's been injured and, and had to deal with some illnesses. But, man, you talk about a, a well-balanced basketball team. Coach Barnes has got it. Meshack, there's Adu drawing the foul. Adu's famous. Nine million likes and nearly a half a million followers on TikTok. A freshman from Durham, North Carolina. He was a 21st ranked player in the 2021 class by Rivals.com. And we were marveling a little bit before things started off today with just his shooting stroke. And that was very silky smooth on that first free throw. Smooth, man. Just real smooth. But. The, the, the coach, you know, Coach Barnes likes the fact that he wants his big guys to shoot the ball up high. And you see all of his big guys do that, whether it's Huntley Hatfield or Fulkerson or Kumwa, they get that ball really, really high, thus negating a shot blocker. Tennessee 90 to 47 leaders and a good block from Jancic, a senior out of Knox Catholic High School. Jancic's like, look at me, you know, I, this is what I do all the time. This is what I do. It is what he does. He's played seven minutes. He has three blocks this season. <laughs> He's a shot blocker. Tough catch by Kydarius Smith. Kent Gilbert with a rebound. Rebounding day here for Tennessee. Meshack. Gilbert in rhythm for three. Broken young fella. First career points for Gilbert. What a good-looking stroke from the young fella. Gilbert dives after it. A run out here. Good hustle back from upstate. 100 seconds to play in this one. Nashak, a little spin cycle. Can't drop it in. Rido Jr., the rebound. Good move by Jamon Nashak, though. Upstate entered 4 and 36 all time against Power 5 teams. This will be their 17th consecutive loss. They beat Georgia Tech back in 2014, but it's been all Tennessee in this ballgame. Gilbert in rhythm.
He hits those in practice all the time. <laughs> Look at this pitch reaction. You know, I, I don't know where those dance moves come out. You know, they talked about TikTok a few minutes ago. I don't even know how to spell TikTok. I mean, what do you do on TikTok, Michael? I mean, is that what is that what the young people do? Well, it's it, maybe I'm not a young person anymore, Steve. I thought that I still was. I don't have TikTok, but I do know what it is, and I do know how to spell it because I had to write it down on my board. It's basically a video sharing app and 9 million likes. Can't even fathom 9 million likes. I can't fathom 9 million likes, but I'm, I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow your mind, okay? I grew up in a time where there were landlines, all right? You hey, know, so did I. We didn't even have Dial call waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this game right now thinking, what in the world is a landline? Yeah. We had landlines, you know. You, you, I remember wanting to talk on the phone to my friends, and my <laughs> mom was on the phone, and you just wanted her to get off of the phone because, you know, there was no call waiting. Yeah. You know, you, 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 your friends were trying to call. If your friend was running behind, stuck in traffic, mm. you didn't know. You didn't know if they would show up. You That's sometimes would just leave. Three-pointer from Brazil from deep. One minute to go. Tennessee. 95-50. I think the fans here are hoping for a triple-digit effort. Tennessee's been dominant here at home. Every win this season by double digits. 31 points per game on average. 10 to shoot. Jancic with a little post-up game. Drawing a foul and getting to the free throw line. Good for Jancic. You root for guys like that because you know that these guys put in the time. They're the ones doing all the dirty work in practice. You know, they're running the scout team offense, scout team defense. They're rebounding. So you want to see these guys, uh, you know, get to the free throw line, perhaps make a free throw or get a block in, what he, in <laughs> which he did before. So you root for young fellows like this. Another free throw here for Jancic. Makes the foul shot. I think that, what is that, 15 players that have entered the game? All 15 have scored for Tennessee. Now, that's a rarity. That is a rarity. Adu the steal. Look at the athleticism. They were going to leave it for Adu, and he might have got 9 million likes on that finish that he posted it to TikTok. I'm sure he's sitting there thinking, this is going to blow up. Well, Adu, social media. Adu's thinking he's he's mad at, at, at Quentin because he's like bounce pass it to me. And Quentin's like, I'm gonna throw it off the glass to you. <laughs> Illegal screen set by Jancic. Fans not happy. They want to hit triple digits. Rick Barnes, I don't know if he's happy or <laughs> upset. He's had the same mindset all game. Foul on that one. Alves sticks it in, draws the foul. I don't know if the officials get called by the get paid by the call right now. You know, I think both coaches are wanting this game over with just to get out of here. <laughs> Alves misses the shot, and Tennessee can run out the clock here. A fine showing for the balls. We talked about how great their defense was, number one in the country in defensive efficiency, but Steve. How about the offense today? 15 players score.